Good morning and um, for the offering today we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 8 and Paul is busy um, he's busy bragging with a particular group of people in Macedonia. So we pick it up in verse 1 and there we hear that we want to tell you further brethren about the grace. So there's grace that Paul is introducing here, grace that he's talking about um, and telling these Corinthians about. Um, and now he's, it's described as favor and spiritual blessing. So that's grace of God. So God provides grace. Um, and it has been evident in the churches, says this verse. So there's a grace that's been imparted to the churches and it stirred something in their hearts. And when it stirred something in their hearts, it resulted in a particular something. We're going to see now. So um, the fact of the matter is this. When you receive grace, then grace has got an impact in your heart. Grace has got an impact in your life. And um, most of us understand this very well because if you grew up in an Afrikaans culture like I did, then it's likely that at some point in time, you ended up um, <laughs> needing a hiding, deserving a hiding and not getting it. Um, so uh, there's, there's that, that moment in, um, in which you absolutely know that you are guilty. And what happens is... Your, my parents gave me grace in that moment. So instead of getting what I deserve, um, they just said that they're disappointed and, um, and, I, and I wasn't punished. And what happened in that moment in my heart, and this is what happens when you are truly, when, when grace impacts you, is n I, I, don't, I don't get up from that moment thinking, wow, I, I got away with it this time, so I'm going to repeat this mistake you know, aggressively. That's not what happens. In fact, uh, I can attest to the fact, and I think plenty of you can attest to the fact, that in that moment, uh, a lot of lots of people have testified to not never being being uh, given such a su such a hard hiding is exactly that one. Um, and so that's the effect of grace. When grace cuts your heart, then it stirs something in you, and it automatically results in a change of behavior. And that's what Paul is talking about here. Um, and so uh, when grace enters our hearts and it impacts as it did here with the Macedonians, then it also stirs up a desire to give. That's what happened here. So um, favor and spiritual blessing comes from God and it becomes evident in the church in that it aroused in them the desire to give alms. Now, plenty of us have got that desire to give. It's a godly desire. Um, but what's interesting about the Macedonians, if we read in verse 2, um, there was, in their midst, there was, in, for in the midst of an ordeal of severe tribulation, their abundance of joy and their depth of poverty together have overflowed in wealth of lavish generosity on their part. So this is not a group of people um, who were exceedingly wealthy. This is a group of people we find that had a severe tribulation and a depth of poverty. And within that sev severe tribulation and depth of poverty, receiving the grace of God results in this abundance of joy and this desire to give alms. And that is what grace does. So receiving grace will have that effect on you. And, and so it overflows. Um, it, it, there's a joy that bundles up or that bubbles up inside of you and then when it overflows, it overflows in a wealth of generous uh, and lavish generosity. So um, that's one of the ways in which you can see that you've been, received grace. The moment that you, that you understand grace, you want to give back, um, as was the case in, in, those, um, in those instances where I should have been punished but I wasn't punished you just want to give back to your father you just want to give back to your parents and say wait a minute I'm going to do better and I'm going to overflow in joy and overflow in generosity um, so Paul goes further in verse 3 he says for as I can bear witness they gave according to their ability but even beyond their ability so and not only that but this is what grace does they did it voluntarily and so that's a major difference between giving in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, tithes were taken. But in the New Testament, we give voluntarily. 
and we give from, from that place of having received grace and grace having impacted my heart and stirring in me the joy that overflows in the, in the lavish generosity. And so that's, um, that's, that's the bullseye. That's where we're aiming this morning. And look at what, what happened here further with this, this group of Macedonians. They begged. They begged us, that's Paul, most insistently for the favor and the fellowship of contributing. Um, so in other words, to contribute to a ministry um, brings with it some favor and brings with it some fellowship. In other words, you, you are offered an opportunity to partake of the grace on that ministry. If it's a healing ministry and you, and you um, contribute, then healing is part of what you receive. If it's a prophetic ministry, then um, growing in the prophetic is something that happens. If it's, so whatever it is, uh, the ministry, I mean, here you're contributing to life and victory. And so living in victory is part of the grace that you are going to be partaking in, in supporting this ministry. But there's favor and there's fellowship. So whatever is on the ministry um, flows towards you. Um, and so uh, in this ministration for the relief and the support of the saints in Jerusalem. And then, nor was this gift of theirs merely the contribution that we expected. And this is the key. At first, they gave themselves to the Lord. So you're never going to be able to open up your hands and let go of what's in it or to contribute if you don't first allow yourself to be given to God. Um, so it comes from relationship with Him. You give yourself to God. God gives you grace. That grace overflows and bubbles up inside of you. It produces joy. It produces a desire to give. And then suddenly you find that you are able to give even beyond your means and to do so voluntarily. So that means grace has really impacted you. That means you've had a true encounter with God. But there's also the reward of that because there is the favor um, and the um, fellowship of contributing to a ministry um, such as this one that we have here. And so, uh, but first they gave themselves to the Lord and to us as his agents by the will of God, entirely disregarding their personal interests, they gave as much as they possibly could, having put themselves at our disposal to be directed by the will of God. And therein lies another key, because when you give, give according to the will of God. It's not something that is wrung out of you. It's not something that you're manipulated into, but it's something that needs to be in line with the will of God. And because of that, what you need to do is you need to sit and say, Lord, where do you want me to contribute? And then... You listen to the voice of God and you react to the voice of God and you contribute where he tells you to and you contribute as much as he tells you to. All right, so I'm going to leave you with that. If we receive grace, it impacts our hearts and it overflows in lavish generosity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give and bless you as you do so.